First, we start with this. The DA has been rocked by another public fallout with a prominent member of parliament after Pum's 11 Dam was given a sabbatical she did not request. The party's shadow minister for communications, telecoms and postal services has been removed from her post and replaced by her deputy, Zach Mbele. The DA's chief whip, Natasha Mazzoni, says it is common for the party to adjust its shadow cabinet after each elective congress. Mazzoni joins us now to talk more about this. Natasha, evening. Thank you so much for your time. So why would the DA give given uh, Pum's 11 Dam a sabbatical that she did not request? Well, you see, it's a, it's a very difficult situation when you're in a leadership position and you see someone in your cabinet who is struggling with uh, an illness. Pumzile has been very brave and she's been very open about the illnesses that she's suffering from. Uh, many of them are chronic. Uh, she's had a three-month leave period, and I don't think that in the three-month leave period um, she took enough of the time required to, to look after herself. Um, now, given the fact that Parliament goes into somewhat of a recess period over December, January, until we open in February, uh, John Stenhausen and I thought that it would be a, a very good time for Pumzile to take the time that she needs to fully heal um, and to, to regroup and, and to care for herself. Um, so unfortunately, this is a situation of damned if you do and damned if you don't. And I, I think that we erred on the side of caution. Uh, I certainly have taken Pumzile's health as being my top priority. I know that John has done the same. And uh, if, I'm, if I'm held accountable for uh, worrying about a member of my caucus's health, then so be it. I'm ready to defend that decision. But I believe that Pumzile's health must, must absolutely come first. But surely then, Natasha, Pum's 11 Dam, as an adult, should have been the one to make any final decisions on her health. Because as you would have seen, she is now reading this as the party using her poor health to sideline her. Look, this decision isn't made without consultation. Uh, Pumzile has had a chance to speak to John at length. Uh, she's had a chance to speak to me. We have been in talks uh, quite regularly over, over WhatsApp and in the house. Um, Pumzile has not been well, um, and she herself has documented uh, quite openly on social media the fact that she has not been well. The fact of the matter is John and I also have a duty to make sure that our shadow cabinet operates optimally. Um, and this was the perfect time for us to offer Pumzile the sabbatical. Um, at the end of the day, John Steenhuisen, as the leader of the party, decides who the shadow cabinet is in consultation with uh, his executive authority. And it was decided that uh, the sabbatical would be offered to Pumzile. If she chooses not to take the sabbatical, that's her choice. But the shadow cabinet has been appointed, and Zach Mbele was not her deputy. Zach Mbele was actually the shadow minister of small business and enterprises, and he has now been moved into that mm -hmm. portfolio, and he will be the shadow minister of communications. You speak of consultation and Pums Levin Dam being offered a sabbatical. Well, the language she used was that she was informed of the sabbatical. She also goes on to say that her illness did not interfere with her duties in the party. Do you disagree with that? Um, I do disagree with it. Uh, I, I have a sick note from her doctors uh, that had her booked off for a substantial period of time. And by no fault of her own, and with complete consultation with me, uh, Pumzile did not attend many of the sittings of the house because her illness requires bed rest, and it does make her feel dreadful. Um, and I don't expect her to sit in the house or to sit in committees when she's feeling dreadful. Um, and by her own admission, she was feeling terribly <coughs> ill. So I do think that it's interfered with her work. And I want her to take this opportunity to fully heal because I know how much she has to offer. And I, I'm, I, I, I'm taking great pain, I must tell you, uh, from seeing these articles doing the rounds uh, saying that Pumzile feels sidelined. That certainly was never anyone's intention. And I don't believe that looking after someone's health and encouraging them to look after their health themselves uh, should ever be frowned upon. I think that we should encourage it more in the workplace. But she says... We look after Health. Uh, forgive me for uh, jumping in there, Natasha. She says, uh, and I want to quote this tweet, she says, uh, did I drop the ball while I was sick? No. Even when I was sick, like uh, I do when I am well, did I still outperform many of my colleagues? Yes. I asked for no sabbatical. I determined my health. My doctors determined my health, not my employer. And now, subsequent to the news of the sabbatical, she's now tweeted that you as the DA will be hearing from her lawyers. Will you fight her on this? Look, the fact of the matter is this, Tembekile. She can bring her lawyers and she can do whatever she would like. 
She is still a member of parliament. She has not been removed as a member of parliament. She has been removed as the shadow minister of communication. And according to the rules of the Democratic Alliance, the leader has absolute prerogative as to who he or she appoints to the shadow cabinet. So a decision has been made and no court of law uh, and certainly, uh, you know, no, no lawyer's letter is going to, is going to change the mind of, of the party once a decision has been made. We believe that we have taken the best interest of our caucus and Ms. Van Damme into consideration, and we remain steadfast in, in the determination of our shadow cabinet. So just final question then, if this is going to go all the way to Pumzile Van Dam, then having her lawyers approach you as the DA, her party, and essentially her employer, is this the beginning of the end of the road for her as the party? And second question, do you as the DA tonight have an appreciation of how this then feeds into a very real perception that you as the Democratic Alliance have a generally poor handling of relations with black leaders in particular? Look, I don't go into race baiting at all. It's never been uh, anything that I enter into. And I think that the color of our skin has absolutely nothing to do with the way we do our jobs. So that part of the question, I, I absolutely refuse to entertain. I find that rather insulting. But when it comes to the DA's handling of issues, unfortunately, we live in the age of social media. And it's not just the DA. It's any political party that has any form of disagreement or any unhappiness within its party. It lands up on social media pages. I do think that it's unfortunate that people take to social media before they take to their own party and discuss things on social media platforms and I do sometimes question why it's done on such a public platform but I sincerely hope that it's absolutely not the end of the road I see no reason why it is the end of the road and I see no reason why this uh, this issue can't be sorted out amicably. Natasha Mazzoni the Democratic Alliance Chief Whip thank you so much for your time tonight Let's